guys. In this video, we're going to be going over how Redux Saga works. So, opening up the directory, go into Sagas and then Sagas.js. Um, you'll see something that looks kind of like this. Um, if yours looks slightly different, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and comment out or uncomment all this stuff. Um, and let's go over uh, how a saga works. So I like to think about it in a kind of few different ways. Um, the first is down here you'll have all your sagas. So each there's usually you group. Um, what I like to think of is a saga is something that uh, makes an API call is usually what I use it for. Um, so one API call will usually have two functions. Um, uh, something, for example, a something saga and a call saga. Um, and then you'll always have a root down here that will be forking off different sagas. Um, if that doesn't make sense, basically what's happening is down here, you'll just call the sagas that you put here. Um, a simplified version of this is... The first thing you want to call, for example, we're going to be using a get weather, so I would call this get weather saga, and I would call this call get weather. Um, this is just like the style format that I like to make my sagas in. And then this, the get weather saga, this is like a listener. This is listening for an action. Um, and to make it actually listen, you have to fork it. So get weather saga. This function tells uh, tells you what it's listening for. So take every, and then right here, you put in what it's actually listening for. The In the root here, this actually starts listening. This is what actually um, is basically listening for the actions. This is what it's listening for. And then once it's listened and heard what it's listening for, it will then call the get whether uh, function, which is this function right here, call get weather. Now we just need to fill in what uh, this guy right here, what should we be listening for? Well, if we just hop back over real quick to our components and then our simple form, we'll remember we created this little submit guy here and it has a little dispatch and it has the type fetch weather. Well, what get weather saga is listening for is different types of actions. So it's looking, for example, we could look for this, and that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be looking for fetch weather. Now you can have multiple sagas. Um, what you, I usually do is just copy and paste. I can have another one. Uh, I could call it uh, call get tacos or something. And maybe this, this one's called get um, get tacos saga and then I would fork it down here um, get tacos saga um, and then maybe I do fetch tacos so that's how you would add another um, saga in as you can see you just basically follow the same uh, procedure okay so we're listening for fetch weather so whenever this action is called, it's going to come to our saga over here. It's been listening for fetch weather, and then when that happens, it's going to call get weather. Also note, this is all happening in the background. This is an asynchronous call, um, which is important. Um, you also notice the syntax is very weird. It's got these function stars, yield, don't worry about that stuff. Um, just kind of follow... Um, What's, you don't really have to worry about how it works. Uh, the you can you can get it to work without understanding the background of how it works. It's a generator function. If you want to look more into it, Google it. Um, but to get Redux Saga working and you use the power of it, you don't really have to worry about too much how this works. Just know um, to follow the syntax. You do function star for these two. And then you'll have something that looks follows this template. You'll be yielding, take every, and then up here it'll look like this. Now, um, this call get weather, 
what this does is it will then um, do something. Now, what would we like it to do? Well, in our case, we would like it to call uh, the Yahoo Weather API and get us a uh, some weather for the location that we specified. So, also, uh, real quick, again, uh, it takes in an action here. I'm going to use the notation to break that down. Um, and just notice uh, right here, we can get location resolve reject. Location resolve reject. Okay. Okay, so notice I have yield call. Call right here is when you'll pass in the function. This is the actual call to your API. So this will be get weather. We can create a function called get weather. Um, it takes a location and we'll create the full thing of this in a second. This is what's gonna call Yahoo API for weather. And then we pass that into our call get weather and then we pass in location as a parameter notice we do a comma we pass as a parameter to call and then the call passes get weather location okay then whatever is returned from get weather so for now we'll just return that um, is passed to this result and then result once you get the result um, so we can just you can console log it if you want to see when this happens I find that's pretty helpful. Once you get the result, what you want to do is you want to update the state. And also, we can go back to full screen. Um, what you want to do is after you finish calling the API, you now have data. You now have this weather. You want to show it on the screen. And to do that is uh, you dispatch another action. And you're going to pass in the result. And this is going to go to Redux, and it's going to reduce it. We'll just set that up um, in a second. And that will actually set up the uh, data, put it in the state, um, and this allows us to actually use the data and show it on the UI and use uh, in a React application, use the data. So we can say um, fetch weather done. Um, and right now there's nothing listening for this, we'll add that later. And this is just a regular reducer we're going to add to the listen for that guy. Okay, so now we just need to fill out our get weather. Instead of having a dummy function here, we actually need to make an API call. Um, to make the API call, we are going to be using super agent. This makes it a little easier to uh, make API calls. I like it. It's pretty neat. I'll show you how it works. It's a little library um, that does post requests, get requests, makes that stuff easier. But let me show you how we're going to be using the Yahoo API. Um, I'll leave this link and the URL that we're going to be using in the description below. Um, but basically what's happening here is, uh, and if you come to this URL, you can check out the Yahoo with, along with me. Um, if you just click on weather in Greenland, it gives us this URL and we can go here and it'll give us data in a JSON, or not JSON, a JSON format that we can then parse. Um, in this case, for whatever reason, it's not giving us the data. I might be over my rate limit, is probably what it is, um, or something, but we're gonna be using this URL right here. Uh, and just calling that and changing the uh, URL. So if we go back real quick, is how are we gonna actually change it for different locations? Well. If we, we're going to copy this URL, paste it here, const URL. If you notice, this is a Greenland, right? This is for Greenland. If we just search Greenland, you'll notice right here, this is a parameter you pass into the URL. So instead of Greenland, we'll just put in whatever location, location that, uh, was passed into us. We'll search that location instead. Um, then we'll actually go to that URL and get the uh, JSON data. So to do that, we're going to make a request. Um, to make a request, you just tell what you're going to do. What type of request you want to do? We're going to do a get request. We're going to be going to this URL, and then after we go to that URL, 
we're going to do dot then. What do you want to do with the data? Um, all we're going to do is we're going to parse it and then return it back data dot text. Okay, so it's going to return that uh, parse data back to uh, the result. And then we're going to put the fetch to weather done. Now what we'd like to do also is check. Well, remember when I went to this URL here, I got an error. Um, we were, you know, getting, uh, we were, I don't know, out of rate limit, something didn't want to show us uh, this stuff. I don't know why. And actually, did we want to do Greenland? Actually, that might have been why. I think we actually wanted current conditions. Was that that one that gave us better results? Well, it's not giving us better results. Maybe it was a different link. Nope. Either way, we're getting bad data, right? Okay, here we go. Oh, it, it just disappeared. You saw for a second that there was more data. I don't know why it's not showing it now. But you see it's not actually giving us the full weather. Uh, and when it does this, we would like to throw an error um, and just tell them, hey, we can't get the data right now. Um, and we'll update that in our UI. But we don't have to touch our UI because we set it up with Redux Forms nicely to handle when we throw a request. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if result.query dot results exists then we know we got a good request and then we'll just we're gonna yield uh, that and then we're gonna also call resolve and that just resolves the promise that we uh, did in our redux form and then here we're gonna call uh, reject because we got a bad uh, we got bad data back from our API, the Yahoo Data API. So no data for that location, or maybe our rate limit is uh, has been exceeded or whatever. Something has gone wrong, so we want to display an error. I'm going to say no data for that location. Okay, so this is our Redux saga. It is all done. So just a recap of how it's working is we're listening for the fetch weather action. When the fetch weather action happens, uh, this is happening in the background. We call get all weather or call get weather. And we uh, this function is called. We take the location that was passed in and we call get weather. Now get weather then goes to Yahoo and uh, gets the weather for that location using this URL. It parses the JSON and passes it back here. Um, using the JSON, we check if we got a valid response. If we get a valid response, we pass, we call another action, which we will then uh, make a reducer for right now um, to handle this and update the state. Otherwise, we reject um, and we do no data for that location, throw an error back, and our Redux form will show an error with the message on the screen like, uh, oops, spelled out the wrong location like I showed you before. Um, so real quick, I just want to hop over here, see if we can show you that error message. Submit, no data for that location. Nice, let me pass that. So that's exactly what we want to see. Um, and you know what, real quick, let's see if we can get uh, a good location working. Um, is it loading? It looks like it's loading, and I don't know if it got data. We can look at it here. Uh, I had uh, console the results, and it looks like we did get weather for New York. Awesome. Um, so next, we need to add that to the state, and then we could then once we add it to the state, we can show it on the screen. Um, to add to the state, we're going to make it that reducer that I told you about. So we're just going to go to reducers and create a weather reducer. So function weather. The initial state is just going to be a regular object. Um, we're going to make a switch statement. Um, and we're just going to look for the type of the action that we want. And what is the type that we want? Oops, we don't need you. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, it was in our sagas. It was fetch weather done. I'm just going to copy this right here. And we're going to say case fetch weather is done. When we get that, we're just going to return action.result. And then we have our default case where we just return state. And we're just going to export default weather. Okay, that's our reducer. That's going to add the result that we get from the JSON to our state. Um, now, to finish off that reducer, we just need to add it to uh, our root reducer. So we're just going to import weather from weather. And we'll say, we'll just pass in weather to our root reducer right here. Okay, I'm going to come back over to the components and then the app.js and add it to our state. So weather is equal to state.weather. Okay. Now if we come back over here and I type in New York, see if I get some data. and query results, I do get some data. Now if I come to React, this is a Chrome Dev tool that I have and I recommend you get it. I'll put it in the description below the link to it. It's very helpful. Um, it allows us to look at the state and the props. So I'm just going to come to the, we'll look at main and we'll look at weather. And you notice this is what we added and it has all the data that we can use to get weather and gives us all this data. So we have now all this data available for us in our props. Um, and then we will be showing that little thing right here in the next video.